Hey everybody, welcome back to our Facebook Live series. My name is Brianna Smith and I am the Executive Director of the Midwest Digital Marketing Conference here in St. Louis. And I'm so excited to have you back with us today for our special uh, Facebook Live series where we sit down with some of the amazing Midwest Digital Marketing Conference speakers to give you some uh, insights onto what their specialties are, um, as well as a sneak peek into their sessions. So if you're attending the conference or thinking about attending, um, you can kind of get an idea of who our speakers are and what you're going to learn. Um, and today I'm really excited to have an amazing speaker with us and always a great supporter of MDMC. Jenny Bristow. She is the CEO and co-owner of a digital and analytics analytics agency here in St. Louis called Anvil Analytics and Insights. Anvil was named the fastest growing company by the St. Louis Business uh, Journal this past year. Congratulations, that's so amazing. And we were all so honored to have them as our title sponsor last year for MDMC19. And they've always been a great supporter. Um, Jenny helps brands find success online in real and measurable ways, which we all know is a key thing for marketers. She has a deep background in different digital marketing specialties, like search marketing, both, both organic and paid, social media, email marketing, conversion optimization, and content marketing. So all facets of digital marketing. She thrives working with clients that are goal-oriented and measure success in sales versus eyeballs, which I totally just speaks to me 100%. Thank you so much, Jenny, for being here with us today. Thanks for having me, Brianna. I appreciate it. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do um, and about Anvil Analytics and Insights? Yeah, so Anvil is a little over four years old. We're based here in St. Louis, uh, right in downtown Clayton, and we are a marketing and analytics agency. So people usually come to us whenever they have been doing marketing either internally or with another agency, and they don't really have a good grasp on what's working and not working to the level of detail that they want. So a good rule of thumb is if their boss came to them and said, hey, you have an extra 10000 or $100,000 to spend this month in marketing. If you don't know where you put it, that's the kind of people that come to us. So we start out by helping them create a measurement plan, make sure they're getting the metrics they need to make those business decisions, and then help them with all the digital marketing strategy and optimization as well. Wow, so exciting. Definitely speaking to my data nerd and me, um, which I think all of us marketers really are nowadays, and you really have to be because it's all about that data. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so you got to start loving it. Um, so if you haven't joined us before for one of these chats, um, they're very free flowing. We'd love to uh, answer comments and questions as they come in as well. So if you have any questions um, during our live um, episode, uh, throw them into the comments and we will answer them. Um, even just let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, I'm here in St. Louis. Jenny, are you here in St. Louis right now as well? Yeah, Clayton. Awesome. I wasn't sure if you were traveling. I know you're no, not today. busy, busy. <laughs> so we're both here in St. Louis. Um, but if you're tuning in from elsewhere, let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna. I'm going to ask Jay some questions. At, you can ask her questions as well. We'll get a sneak peek at the conference. Um, mm -hmm. And then also a sneak peek into what Jenny will be talking about during her session at the conference. All right. Awesome. So first, let's dive into my first question. Um, what are some of the top things that brands are struggling to figure out when it comes to measurement of their marketing campaigns right now? Yeah, so it sounds basic, but where to start? So one of the most difficult things, especially for senior marketing leaders that have a more traditional background, like PR communications, they know they need to be measuring something. And obviously, they want to get it as close to revenue as possible for their marketing initiatives to value. But they don't really know what is measurable online, how to tie multiple platforms together, what tools they should use. So usually, whenever people um, have a conversation with me and they're struggling, one of the biggest questions is, where do I start and how do I create a roadmap in order to get to where we have more sophistication in our measurement plan? I can definitely see that. I think some people just get so scared of where to where mm -hmm. to start. Um, they definitely need some help. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. 
Um, do you see brands building analytics teams in-house or outsourcing that more often? Good question. So kind of a combination of both. A lot of the organizations that we talk to and work with really have an end goal of having it in-house because everybody really wants to own their own data. Um, but usually they don't have the resources or knowledge and how else to kick it off internally. So most of the time what we're seeing is kind of a hybrid where perhaps they have an analyst in-house that could do some of the day-to-day -day metrics, mm -hmm. but they want another company to be able to come in as their partner or an extension yeah. of the team to be able to help make sure that um, all of the technical tracking is accurate and um, something that they can really rely on. Um, they want to make sure that they have the right tools in place. They want to make sure that their data is secure and not vulnerable vulnerable from a storage and accessibility perspective. They want to make sure they're compliant with HIPAA laws, for example, oh, yeah. <laughs> their audits for HIPAA compliance. Um, so they really need somebody else with more technical expertise to come in to help them do that. Um, but the eventual path that we see a lot of companies going to is wanting to own it in-house, which really makes a lot of sense when you think about it from a um, you know data governance perspective. No, that, that definitely does make sense, um, you know, especially for, uh, I work for healthcare companies. So I totally understand um, mm -hmm. that. And also just um, that security of, of owning your data. But mm -hmm. I also get totally that it can be overwhelming. You know, where do you start? Where do you start building these reports? Yeah. What is the right data? Um, exactly, right? I think that's the biggest thing is there is so much mm -hmm. data. We have, it's just, it's a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're, humans, not computers. So we can only yeah. use so much of it, but how do we use it to our best ability? Exactly. And are you sure you could trust it? You see so often yeah. people come to us and they say, you know, we set up this platform using Domo or whatever it is. And Domo as a platform is great. I'm not throwing them under mm -hmm. the bus, but, um, but then the executives don't trust it and they're running the numbers by hand every month still. And so there's a whole culture shift that has to happen alongside the technology shift or it'll never be successful. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. You can't keep going the same way when you have all of these resources yeah. <laughs> available. Um, do you um, find that like if a com company is interested in improving its measurements, um, like there's a specific path that they can kind of start on with that isn't maybe too scary yeah. or anything or overwhelming really? Mm -hmm. Well, what I always try to tell people is progress over perfection. So even I know Data can be perfect, but that's very intimidating to somebody who's never run any sort of analytics or business intelligence programs before. So making a step today is much better than waiting until everything is perfect to kick off a measurement program. So what we recommend is to first figure out and make sure you're all on the same page as far as how your marketing initiatives roll up to your overall business goals. And then figure out how can those tie and be associated with online activity and are we tracking that correctly? But the number one thing that I normally say is after you've done all of that, start training, start going and get Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager certified. Um, we just kicked off a bunch of uh, short workshops here where we're doing training for people that are building internal teams. So the more education you can have, even as a senior leader, the more empowered empowered you can be to be able to make those small steps to get to where you have good data that's helping you make decisions. Yeah, and I cannot just even echo that enough that it definitely for leadership, like you have those that are creating these reports and are, are diving in there, but like you have to be able to read those reports and, you know, tell your other leadership team members what they say. Um, because if you have this report full of all these words and terms and, um, you know, what is the click through rate and, and things like that. Um, they may not be able to project exactly. <laughs> what it's actually saying. Correct. Well, and also you know what they're telling you is right or not. I mean, yeah. you need to be able to have enough of a technical understanding of the report to be able to throw a flag and say, wait a minute, this, how did you calculate this? It doesn't make sense yeah. to me that you're tracking conversion rates whenever we don't have a tool on our site that can do that. So it's important to have enough technical understanding to, if nothing else, know if your team's playing you or not. Yeah, <laughs> no, 100%. You know, yeah. make sure the data is right. Um, kind of a, just a question for me, actually, but when you are working with these different tools, um, 
I always find sometimes that there can be some discrepancies compared, yes. you know, when you're using one tool, whether that be um, a HubSpot or Google Analytics yeah. or uh, any other type of analytics Facebook tool. Ads. Yeah, something. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing, oh, I'm seeing I have this many clicks, but I yeah. actually only have this many website visits, things like that. Um, is that a common thing? Um, and uh, is it worrisome or is it something that like is pretty common across that you're going to see these type of discrepancies? It's a wonderful question. We deal with this daily. So <laughs> the reason you see discrepancies are for two different reasons. First, the tracking methodology. So a lot of these tools use different ways to track users and then attribution models. So are they doing it based off of the first interaction that they had with the platform or the last interaction or some combination? So what we normally do is have an education session with our clients where we walk through all the platforms they're using and explain and say, you know, Facebook usually is a hog and they'll take credit for anything they touch ever, whereas Google will normally assign credit based off last touch or last click mm. of a different platform. And so walking through and saying, here's how they all do it, but here's our source of truth. We are going to use platform Y whatever it might be, to be able to track the success of our marketing campaigns all of the time. We may pull up the Facebook ads platform to understand, you know, granularities of the campaign, but the source of truth is this source of truth. That way, yeah. every meeting, when you go in with yeah. additional people on your team, you're not arguing about the number of conversions. Yeah, I like that. Because, yeah, because sometimes you'll come back and have but I saw this number <laughs> over here. And, and but it's, so it's different and, and, yeah. and having that, that conversation can always be like hard and you're like, Oh, where did that number come from? Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then credibility comes into play because then they yeah. say like, well, is this even right? Because they don't match. And so being able to understand the technicalities behind the tracking discrepancies is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, before we get a little bit more of a sneak peek um, into Jenny's session um, and answer some of your guys' questions, um, don't forget to throw them into the comments. Any data questions you got out there, um, Jenny is your gal. Um, so we're going to take a quick sneak peek at what you can expect at the 2020 Midwest Digital Marketing Conference. Well done. One second. All right. Technology, like I said, it always goes back. Just like uh, the systems go back and forth uh, with our numbers, sometimes our technology. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Nope. Okay. So we will take a sneak peek in just a minute. I lied. Uh, <laughs> uh, no worries. Um, but I would like to ask one quick question before then, then we take uh, before we take a quick sneak peek. Is that is there a like I, I mean, I'm familiar with some diff different platforms. A lot of people are, are familiar with like a Google Analytics. Um, what are some of the other analytics tools out there that people um, might want to consider using um, as their source of truth uh, platform? Yeah, so um, Google Analytics is very widely used. So we see that even for very, very large organizations, a very large percentage are using Google Analytics still. It might be the paid version of Google Analytics so that they get access to more of the data and more tracking abilities. Um, but Google Analytics is still a great source. Um, what we usually do is actually move into a business intelligence platform where we're pulling all of these disparate databases. So think Google Analytics data, the customer conversion and revenue data um, from internal systems, um, any information from Facebook ads, uh, HubSpot or any email or marketing automation tools, pull all of them together into a data lake and then you start pulling information and data. And that allows you to do more front to end measurement where you're really understanding and say, okay, it looks like um, new customers that come to us from Facebook, for example, might have an average lifetime value of Y. But if they come from Google, it's much higher at Z. And so it allows you to really understand all of the different levels um, of value that your different platforms bring. And we really like Microsoft Power BI because a lot of our clients we begin working with are already paying for it for free. If you have the um, Microsoft 365 suite or 360 suite. Um, and so that allows you to be able to actually implement a BI tool without paying like 
say $5,000 a month for a tableau. And you can spend that $5,000 a month instead on training for your internal employees to be able to understand how to leverage insights from it. So that's kind of the technology stack that we use for a lot of our clients that we see being not only the most cost effective, um, but secure and give you full access to all the data across the spectrum. Awesome. So those are some great tools that you guys can consider. Um, I know I've used some of them myself. I would love to become more efficient at some of the other ones as well. <laughs> time time limits for, for everything. Um, but now we are actually going to take a sneak peek at uh, MDMC 2020. And then we will learn a little bit about Jenny's session that you may want to add to your agenda when you attend the conference. All right, so there's a little sneak peek um, at the conference that was from last year's event. Um, so we've got over 80 speakers, or maybe 90, the number is always <laughs> growing. Um, and amazing sessions from social media to email marketing to data to personal branding, entrepreneurship. Um, we try to have all kinds of stuff for you guys. Um, but one session that you'll definitely, I think, want to check out is going to be Jenny's session, um, which is implementing a data-driven marketing culture. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what attendees can expect to learn during this breakout session? Yeah, so um, one of the things that we try to impart on people that come to us and ask questions about uh, the tools and processes for implementing a BI business intelligence tool is that it isn't just about the technology. It's really about the people and the training and the communication um, in order to make sure that whatever tools and processes you implement are used effectively throughout your organization. Otherwise, anything that you put into place is going to be seen as a waste by senior management and it isn't going to be a good use of your time. So this course is based 100% around that and making sure that um, they understand things like how to set a three-year roadmap for a measurement strategy. And that includes not only people and potential hires you may need to make on your team, uh, but training for existing people within your organization that are going to be having access to the reporting and tools. And then also thinking about technology, both short-term needs and longer-term needs to increase the efficacy and detail that you're able to dig into with your reports. Um, we're also going to be talking about the pros and cons of building a team internally versus outsourcing um, and what some of the job titles and salary ranges are whenever you do look to hire internally, just so you can start understanding yeah, what a cost will be to build an internal team. We're going to talk about also um, data governance and process. So whenever you roll out analytics and tracking uh, uh, one of the most important things is consistency throughout your organization and something that is not sexy at all. So I'm going to do my best to make it entertaining, but it's super, super important to make sure that people throughout your organization are tracking things for their marketing campaigns the same way. And it's consistent. So the output and the analytics are the same. So one of the key things I'm going to be trying to do for my my um, session is make sure it's as actionable as possible. So I love looking out in the crowd, make sure people are scribbling notes as feverishly as possible for takeaways. Um, so everything that we'll be presenting will be deeper than theory. We'll be talking about what you can do that when you go into the office the next day and the next week to become more efficient as a leader immediately. 
Wow. Well, that sounds really exciting. And um, I'm not running around like a crazy person. I think you'll see me in there. <laughs> um, because I think this applies to any organization, um, you know, especially if you are getting into your data and diving in and trying to figure things out. Um, and I love that you are going over what it is to build an internal team or an outsource, or maybe it's a combo, um, but being realistic with it. This is exactly. this is the reality. Mm -hmm. We're not sugarcoating here. Um, we have a question from one of our uh, viewers, Paul Jarrell. So what type of platforms do you use to pull data in from Google and Facebook both? Great question. So there are a variety of ways to do this. There are, um, so the process is called um, ETL, extract, uh, transform, and oh, since I'm on a Facebook Live, I'm not gonna remember what the LC is for. <laughs> but there's an entire process where there are pl uh, platforms put in place that be able to actually extract the data from these different tools, and then um, put it in the right format that you need to put it into a data lake. So you can either use one of these tools, and I'll be covering the tools in depth in my session, um, as well as as uh, actually leveraging the platform's APIs themselves. And so depending on the kinds of tools we're specifically looking at, because you'll want to go far beyond just Google and mm -hmm. Facebook, um, you may need to use an ETL tool or you may need to use uh, an API or a combination of the two. So um, I'll be covering the full tech stack, the technology stack that you'll need to be able to extract uh, um, and to be able to visualize the data the way that you need based off the tools you're using. Awesome, great question, Paul. So definitely recommend attending Jenny's session. Because um, <laughs> obviously there's a lot that goes into this. It's, mm -hmm. it's much more complicated than uh, I think I realized, but Very to do it right, to do it right. Yeah. Um, awesome, and hi, Christy, thanks for joining us. And she just said, Jenny, she enjoyed your session so much last year. Oh, thank you, Christy. I hope to see you again this year. I appreciate the compliment. Awesome. And definitely like just hearing your description of the sessions and um, the different data stories we're talking about. Um, if you're someone who's thinking of going and like um, attending some of uh, like the sessions on GDPR mm -hmm. or any of that, this is gonna play right in um, to attend this one as well. So, uh, you know, because how you're using your data is just as important in regards to how you're using it to measure and reporting, how you're using people's data. Uh, we have a lot covered this year at the conference with that because uh, everybody is just California laws, GDPR, everything. Everybody is kind of like, there's a lot going on. Am I properly getting data? And then am I properly using my data mm -hmm. once I have it? So, uh, a lot happening there. Um, but Jenny, uh, who would be ideal to attend the session? So obviously, yeah. you know our conference, there's a lot of <laughs> sessions. Um, so if someone's looking at their schedule, trying to build their personal agenda, um, mm -hmm. how do they know if this is the right one for them while they're there? Yeah, so I would say this would be a good session for you if you're a marketing leader who manages a budget. And you're at the point that you're wanting to justify your budget and you're not quite sure where to start from a measurement perspective. Great session. Or if you are involved in or manage an internal analytics team to be able to kind of gut check what are you doing right now? What other opportunities are available? What can you bring back to maybe recommend that you take things to the next level as far as the amount of data and accuracy of your information? So those are the two core audiences, but really anybody who's interested in analytics and wants to understand the structure and everything that goes yeah. behind it beyond just the data and the numbers would be a good session for them. Um, so yeah, so kind of think about that when you guys are building your schedule. I know there's a lot of sessions, um, but if you have that interest in data, this is definitely going to be one of the sessions that you want to attend. So when they're not attending your session, um, <laughs> when, what other sessions um, are you excited to see and speakers you're excited to see this year at the conference? You know, I don't have any specific speakers to mention, but what I normally try to do at MDMC is go to topics that I wouldn't normally attend. Um, so things like uh, content creation or persona development or social media management, kind of those areas outside of what I'm normally 
knee deep in on a day-to-day -day basis because I think it's really refreshing to go and put yourself um, around people who think differently than you do and who love the same thing as you but really approach it from a different angle because I usually find there's a way to evolve my own thinking about my areas of expertise by thinking about it through the lens of somebody else with different expertise. So I'll definitely be checking out maybe a couple other analytics and measurement topics but I'm so nerdy in on that on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably be trying to fill my schedule with areas that I'm not in on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure I'm fine-tuning my areas there. And then honestly, networking in the halls is one of my yeah. favorite things about MDMC. You see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you really, you really do. Um, all, all types of marketers um, from all different levels of expertise. I love that idea, though, um, especially if you are very focused in one specific, one particular type of marketing, such as just content or just social, and that's your everyday. Um, I love that idea to, you know, just go in different directions because that's probably where you're going to get the most new and inspired um, ideas to actually bring back work um, that you never would have thought of, um, how they apply to your job. Um, so I love that idea, especially because I know it can be like overwhelming. <laughs> what do I pick? Exactly. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, we are so excited to have you back at MDMC again. Um, mm -hmm. And we are only a few months out. Um, if you haven't got your tickets yet, um, MDMC is uh, this April, April 8th, 9th, and 10th. The breakout sessions are on the 9th and the 10th. Um, our workshops are on the 8th. They are intensive workshops. Um, we have a couple new ones this year. So if you've never attended MDMC or you have and you uh, but haven't attended a workshop, make sure to check out some of those on our website. Mm -hmm. um, tickets only start at $189. So they are the most affordable in the industry because we are a nonprofit and all of our proceeds go back to the students at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. So again, thank you so much, Jenny, for joining us. Um, I learned so much and now I want to just go dive into my analytics. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. And we hope we see everybody at um, the 2020 Midwest Digital Marketing Conference this April. Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.